Okay, hello. Welcome to Hawaii. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Hawaii. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? How are you? Where are you in the world? I'm in Hawaii. Where are you? Write it in the comments. It's like 5 p.m. here, and so I've just poured myself um, a cup of vanilla flavored nut drink. It's like a coffee alternative. Whoopsies. And I'm sitting in the cactus garden. And this is the strainer. It's not cute, we'll remove that. And I'm so excited to talk to you guys. There we go. Cuter! <gasps> Where is everybody? We've got people from Chicago. Hi Cortez from Chicago and Romy from Los Angeles and Jordan in Australia on the Gold Coast. Gorgeous. Oh, some of the texts, some of your guys' messages are getting like, the text is getting all weird. It's hard to read, but Jerry, hey, in Mississippi. I think Ronald, maybe? Michael? Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hello, 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 hello. I was just trying to do some uh, yoga on the lava rocks, but the lava rocks are so uncomfortable. Oh my God. We've got uh, someone from Toronto. Often when you see me doing yoga videos, like on the beach or out in nature, like I'm not that comfortable. <laughs> Sometimes I am, but a lot of the time I'm just like putting up with the pain, which is kind of what, how yoga is a lot of the time. You're like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable, but I'm just gonna stay anyway and not let it get to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna relax even though the, the lava rock is cutting into my palms because it looks cute. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's actually, it, it, I really like doing yoga on the beach in the sand. Um, or the grass is nice, but lava rock is at the bottom of the list of comfort. I'm discovered like I can't even cross my legs because my ankle bones go into the stone. I could get a towel. Hold on. I did not go on this live stream purely to complain about lava rocks to you. <laughs> it's just that the discomfort of them inhibits me from thinking of anything else. Okay, what's like the greatest thing that happened to you today? Can you share that in the comments? Something cool that happened? For me, I got to see humpback whales. I went on an ocean safari and I got to see whales jumping out of the water. Oh, I've been up living on a side of a mountain, so it's been amazing to go down into the ocean today. Do you like the ocean? Okay, what do I, what do I have to share with you today? Hmm. My main project at the moment has been writing a novel. Most of the last year I've been living right next to the ocean, like on the shore. I can hear the waves from my, my bedroom or my desk where I'm sitting and writing. At the moment, 
I'm sitting up on the mountain and I can't hear the ocean waves. Um, and I f it feels so different. And I've been wondering like, what is the difference? Why, why do I feel so calm at the ocean? Why do I feel not as calm actually out in the countryside? Uh, this is my hypothesis. Tell me if you relate to this. The land is still, it's flat, it's not moving. So when I sit on land, I realize how much movement is taking place inside of me. I'm the one that's squirming around. I'm the one that has a lot of busy thoughts and tons of feelings. Whereas when I sit next to the ocean, by comparison, I'm pretty still and the ocean's moving all over the place. So that was my first hypothesis. Maybe I feel more chill than the ocean. So when I sit next to the ocean, I'm like, I'm the chill one here. <laughs> and when I sit in the countryside, I'm like, oh my God, I've got so many things going on in my mind. Ah, everything's just staring at me. <sighs> Does anyone relate to that? So then I started looking at things on land, looking for things that move, like dragonflies and birds and the leaves and the trees. And I was like, maybe if I focus on the movement of life on land, it won't feel so still. Similarly too, if you're getting really seasick, you look at the horizon because it's still. So if you're on land, you can look for things that are moving. And if you're at the ocean, you can look for things that are still. And this brings us some balance. <laughs> what are y'all saying? You love the ocean, Los Angeles, California, Colorado. I got people from all over the place. What else can I offer you today? Hmm. Mm. Thinking a lot about pushing and forcing and pressuring versus allowing and blossoming and flowing and the balance between these two things. Specifically as it relates to my creative writing project also applies to anything in life. But I'm at this uh, spot in Hawaii for a month to work on my novel and I set an intention to make a lot of progress and to make it to the end of the first part of the novel and of the story. And I realized that this first whole, I've been here for about a week and I've had a mindset of pressuring and pushing and forcing like I gotta make this happen. And it's kind of crushed me a little bit because I'm like, this is so hard. Versus when I switch my mentality and I think instead about opening up, like I'm a channel, I just open up the pipe and the creative inspiration can, can flow through. Uh, then it feels softer, it feels more relaxed. Like I don't have to force this and make this happen. This is just gonna happen. And I'm making myself available as the person who shall put the words on the page. I will just hear the words come to me and they'll flow on out. It, it relieves all this pressure and um, it ends up feeling much easier. Oh, you guys, I am seriously bummed right now because I wanna read your chat messages and YouTube at my end has the chat the fonts are all mixed up or like the letters are all on top of each other so I can't make out what anyone's saying oh, how do I I just see Ronald hi Ronald you're saying that just before your dad passed he used to do the same thing he used to do the same what I can make out, I think it's Ronald that said something about it calms you and it makes you feel 10 times better. Oh, it's not very good guys, is it? If we have a, um, 
a chat-based conversation and I can't make out your words. That's a disappointment. And now I just see the word weird. Someone wrote weird. Can you guys read the chat? Can you read each other's chats? Meow. Shouty face. Well, this is completely useless. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and post this on the community board so you can see what I'm dealing with. I guess I'm just going to have to keep talking and I won't be able to read your comments, which is a bummer because I was really excited to read your comments today. Maybe I can read them in the replay, um, which won't help me facilitate this conversation any bit. Oh. What is something else I've been learning that I can pass on to you? Mm, I've had some back pain. Um, my best guess is that it's because I started doing a glute workout program. So for the past six weeks, I've been focusing on working out my butt. And it's a lot. <laughs> and I think it's putting strain on my low back. And So it's a new experience for me to practice yoga with a sore back. I am accustomed to being very bendy and very fluid and free and yoga is like a, pl a playtime where it's just very pleasurable. So for me to feel uh, limited by discomfort is something that doesn't happen to me very often but when it does happen it's so enlightening because then I'm aware of what other people go through. I'm like, oh my God, this is what you were feeling? Like I've taught so many yoga classes to help people with back pain. And all I could really do is understand the anatomy. I can give you poses that I've, I've been told these help with back pain. Anatomically, these should help you with back pain. I get feedback from students. They tell me that they, these poses did help them with back pain but I don't have that extra little grain of personal experience. So at the moment I am having back pain and it's adding to that, that richness of my teacher toolbox where now I can be like, oh my God, <laughs> these are the poses that worked, why, what made them worse, just speaking from my body. I'm having the kind of back pain that hurts when I go forward. So like back bends feel good, but forward folds hurt and um, typically whenever my back has been sore in the past, it's forward folds that would be really soothing to it. Like back bending would hurt, but like touching my toes or doing a child's pose would feel nice. But in this case, it's the opposite. So one thing I've been learning just in my own corporal experience is maybe something that a lot of you guys feel for each other. Cause you guys can see the comment. Can you put a smiley face in the chat? If you experience back pain, like regularly, chronically, like you always have back pain, or you you can also put a smiley face if you've, you've experienced in your lifetime a debilitating back pain. Maybe it's gone away now, but like I feel it on my yoga mat. I feel it throughout the day. And then it affects things like if I'm gonna go on an airplane, which I will be, I'm gonna be traveling because we're in another travel season. I'm going to be traveling and I'm have for the first time I'm like am I going to be able to be on that airplane for a long time without my back hurting? <laughs> and I'm sitting and writing my novel. I'm like, "Oh, is there too much sitting happening? Do I need more movement or do I need more rest? Do I need more stretching or do I need more strength?" Like do I feel that it's a constant, you have to be like a detective. To be a human being, you have to be a detective. Constantly investigating your body and your life and, and analyzing, like, what's going on? And guessing and trying to, like, 
constantly problem solve. Not just like at work, but just little things like my, my back. <laughs> you know? And then these things layer up. Okay, so I have responsibilities. Like I gotta pay bills. I gotta answer messages. I have to write my book. I have to interact with people. I have to go places. I have to do all these human things. I have to eat food. And then you add pain on top of that. And suddenly all of these things that were already quite a lot to do become even harder. And I know a lot of you guys understand this. I know you do. Um, so I, I wanted to share that because I'm, yeah, I'm suddenly like, oh my God, this is what people deal with all the time. It makes me feel more empathy. Um, I feel more humble as a yoga teacher, that's for sure. Be more aware that, um, you know, the issues that people have in their bodies when they come to do something like yoga I can never know exactly what you're feeling but to, rem to remember that the things that for me could be really, really difficult for somebody else, the things that help me might not help somebody else at all, that this person is not just having a, you know, their back, their back is sore and that's, it's just a body pain. No, that's going to like affect their whole day and their whole life is going to make it harder to work. It's going to make it harder to do everything. So like, I just feel like my, my back hurts a little bit, but my heart's more open. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the characters in my novel starts having back pain. It'll probably happen subconsciously. I'll just be writing and then I'll just be like, and then she put her hand on her back because it started to ache and you're like, oh, <laughs> it's like whatever I'm experiencing kind of goes into the story. Or maybe it'll be more subtle than that. Like my character will just be like, oh, you're such a pain in the back. You're such a pain in my back. Is that an expression? Pain in my neck, pain in my back. Don't stab her in the back. <laughs> oh man. Oh, somebody said the best, the greatest thing that happened to me today is getting to see you. I don't know who said it though, but that's sweet of you. And that's exciting. I'm glad I brightened your day up. I'm seeing some funny emojis pop up. What if everybody try, oh, what did you say? Brian, hey, Brian. And there's somebody here named Keith. He said, you've been doing fine with your instructions for back pain so far. Thank you. That's because I do have like an understanding of it, but that's still so different than like having the personal experience, you know? It reminds me when I started teaching yoga, I was 20 years old. I had like very little life experience and my body was 20 years old and super flexible. And uh, I remember finding it bizarre. I was like, well, how come everybody's sore? Like <laughs> what's going on? I teach a yoga class and all of these students, all my students were like in their thirties or older. I was a 20 year old yoga teacher and I'm just like, just bend over backwards and touch your foot on your head. And then all my students are like, oh, we're old and we have back pain. Actually, I taught like geriatric yoga. I taught for a few years um, on Mercer Island, which is next to Seattle. And it's predominantly a retired community. And I would be teaching yin. Every Friday at lunchtime, I taught yin. And it was a very popular class. And it was full of gray hair and achy bones and great attitudes and really chill vibes because I also taught yoga at a different studio that was like type a people in their 20s and 30s hustling in the corporate like tech industry and they came in for their workout at lunchtime and they're like push us harder and this is a fitness yoga and then I'd go over to the yin yoga on Mercer Island and everyone's just like we're just here to lay on the floor for an hour be chill <laughs> so I was teaching in really different environments and I just remember in the more high energy yoga studio, I felt like, wow, I can't keep up with these people. Like they're all doing handstands and jumping around and way bendier than me. And then I'd go teach the older generation yin yoga and I would be the one that was like, wow, our bodies are so different. I don't understand. I really truly don't understand 
just because I haven't experienced it yet, what it's like to wake up in the morning and be sore and stiff. Now I can say I know what that's like. Um, but I remember when it started to creep in and I was like, oh my God, I'm sore in the morning. This is what people are talking about. And I've been doing yoga since I was 20 and I'm still getting sore in the morning. So I'm like, what, what does somebody feel if they don't do yoga? I remember my brother-in-law telling me that he had, he takes like an hour in the morning before he can even like move. He has to like go creaky slow and get like his body in hot water in the shower or something. So I can relate to that. I've been waking up and going in the hot tub because my body's just not wanting to like lift weights and jump around right away or whatever. <sighs> I'm always amazed at the things we end up talking about. I don't plan these live streams at all. We just get to see where they flow. Mm, I'm doing some deciphering here. I see the word abuse. <laughs> and I see the word flexible. Loosen your back. Stretch it. Stretch your hip. I think someone's trying to give me stretching advice. Oh, stretching my hips, it'll loosen my back. Thank you for, if that's what you're trying to say, thank you for your input. I um, I feel pretty well equipped to be able to kind of feel my way through this. I've been trying a lot of things. Hips, hamstrings. I was concerned I had a herniated disc. I was like, maybe this isn't just like a muscle issue. Maybe I need to rest. I don't know. But my mother is a physical therapist, so I might schedule an appointment with her. Um, eh, cranky. Cranky back. You guys, the writing, I just can't, I can't read it at all anymore. All right, let me think of one other thing that I can share with you. It's something I've learned. I've been learning about human design. That's been fascinating. Um, this past year, I've gotten into the Enneagram and just this past month, I've looked at human design for the first time. And um, are you familiar with that? My girlfriends were pushing me into it. They're like, you gotta do it, you gotta do it tell me what your human design is and we'll be able to figure out your life problems. And I was like, eh, sounds a little hokey to me, but whatever. So I did it. And so far, everything that I've read has been beautifully spot on. So satisfying and validating. <laughs> so check that out. What's someone else saying? Woo. Someone's saying something about videos because you make it easier for me because of your motivation. Okay. Okay. Your beauty keeps me coming back also. I don't know who said that, but Javine, I'm glad I'm motivating you. Thank you for the compliment. Someone said your smile has so much life and in it and your smile as well. Whoever said that, thank you. You're all saying very nice things. I think someone... This is my confused. I don't know. What was I saying? Human design. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of human design? I am by no means a human design expert, nor am I a, really an ambassador for it. I have only started reading about it in the past one or two weeks. I found it really fun. So if you like looking at things like astrology just for the pure playful fun of it, like what does our horoscope say? Let's just look, go check it out. If you're really into that stuff and you're actually like, I could really use some extra help and guidance in my life right now. I need something to like inspire and stimulate me and help me see myself more clearly. I, I would really like to understand why I, I have the issues I do <laughs> and how to move forward. Human design could be a really cool stepping stone for you. That's how I find it. It's not like I read it and then I have to live my whole life by it like this is who I am but instead it's more like I read it and it and I get to see how my body reacts and I'm like actually you know what this this 
this is how I usually handle things and I can see how that's not helpful. Or if I remember that this is something I really like, like they're describing I'm the kind of I'm the kind of person that likes this and I'm like, you know what? I do like that. I should make I should make more time and take more effort to make sure I do this. So it's just another way to get to know yourself better and um, play with life a little bit more. To give you an example uh, from human design, I'm what they call a manifesting, manifesting generator, which basically means my, the, the type of energy that I have in this world, um, I generate positive energy and I share it with the world. And I'm also very, like, very uh, full of passion and I have a lot of different interests. And so if I try to put myself in a little box, like I'm gonna do one career path, I'm gonna do one job for my whole life, that's one way to live, but that's not how I live and that's not how manifesting generators tend to live. Manifesting generators, like me, tend to have multiple different jobs, multiple different passions, many different hobbies. We have multiple careers in one life. And this is actually what makes us feel happy and fulfilled. For somebody else, doing all those different things could feel really disjointed and stressful and meaningless and spread thin. Um, for someone who likes doing a lot of things, just doing one thing can feel stifling and sucks your soul away. Um, so luckily, I've, I have felt the freedom I have felt the empowerment. I've had the opportunity to be able to do lots of different things and it nourishes my soul and it feels fun. Um, and along the way, I've had many people tell me, focus on one thing. You should just focus on one thing. If you want to be successful, you have to focus on one thing. And I hear that messaging and I've tried, but when I try to focus on one thing, it starts to feel really constrictive. Sometimes I focus on one thing and I see a lot of progress because naturally I'm pushing my energy into one thing so I fly forward. But then there will come a point where I'm like, I'm done with this. I want to do something else. And that's, this is something I've seen as a very natural pattern in my life. And there's been kind of a feeling of, not guilt, but a little bit of worry or anxiety. Like, am I really like going off the beaten track here in like a bad way? Am I like fucking up life? Am I doing this wrong? Am I not sticking with things? Something's wrong with me. Nobody around me does this many careers. Um, and then when I read the definition of a manifesting generator, it's pretty nice to read that. It tells me, you're the kind of person that has a lot of passions. You're going to switch lots of careers. This is, what you're, this is what you're here to do. This makes you happy. Do it. If someone tells you to only do one thing, that's not for you. They don't know you. They don't know what you're about. Ignore it. You're living in a culture where everyone's trying to get you to do one thing, but you're, what do they say? A manifesting janitor. Why do I want to say a manifesting janitor? A manifesting generator is a person who is here to carve a new way of life, to live a life that nobody's ever really lived before. A life path that is uh, off the beaten track. You're weed whacking. What's it called? Bushwhacking? Bushwhacking your life. Cheryl Strayed, who wrote the book Wild, which was turned into a movie, she calls this living uh, a jagged life path. Not, not a linear life path, it's a jagged one, right? It's not like you go to school, you get married, you have your job, you have your house, you have your dog, you do the thing. In the linear, it's more of the like, you go to school, you get married, you divorce, you have a job, you have a different job, you get married, you move to a different country, you have children, you delete all the children, you delete the husband, you delete the children. What does that even mean? You killed your children? That's horrible. That, that would be a jagged life path. Um, I deleted the children because I don't have any, so I just made that up. I was like, yeah, throw children in. Actually, never mind. Delete them. Maybe this is me because I've been writing a novel, so I can literally just like write children into the story and I can just delete them. So I think I'm in delete mode. Side note, I heard that writers, if you look at a writer's keyboard, the delete button will be the most used button. That's the most worn out button. So I looked at my keyboard and it totally is. The, like I have a little cover 
and a few of them, like maybe like the N or the A or the space bar, they're all used up, but the delete button is also totally gone. Because <laughs> I just invent children and delete them. Um, but you see my point. It's this jagged, like, let's go over here. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Ooh. So I bring that up as an example of how learning about human design could be really uh, helpful. It could relieve a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of pressure. You know, just to read, somebody out there in the world wrote that description. They wrote a paragraph that said, hey, if you love a lot of things, that's okay. And so for me to read that, I was like, oh, thanks. That's nice, that's validating. <laughs> Sometimes we need to hear it from somebody else. And then we need to start saying that to ourselves. And to be able to also feel if it's true. Like when I read that, if it wasn't true for me, then maybe it wouldn't make me feel better. Um, and so then how I've started behaving differently is paying attention to those different desires and that pull to try different things. And where in my life do I feel a little bit bored? Where do I really want something to change? Where do I want to do something different? Like where do I see this happening in my life right now? Um, be like man I'm really sick of writing this book I want to do something else that's true <laughs> um, I could be like wow I've been doing like yoga videos or my like my for a couple months I've been like making videos of myself dancing or doing yoga to my new music kind of getting sick of it honestly like to do something new this is the stuff I write about in my journal so I'll be like, I know, we'll just do dancing and yoga videos every day. That seems simple. Stick to that. That's a good strategy. Give me a month though and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so bored. You might be bored too. <laughs> but this is kind of like the whole point is that like me as a person, as a manifesting generator, maybe why you follow me is because I kind of want to do something new every single month. I'm like, well, that was fun for last month. What should we do this month? And that's the fun of it. And I really love it. It's fun. It's fun to change it up. And I was just, before I went on this live stream, I was laying in bed for a second, looking at the ceiling. And I just thought to myself, what if I just radically transformed? Like in a way that none of us expected. That sound, that, that question is so spicy and fun to me. Like, what if I just completely changed my style, started posting completely different videos, just for the pure joy of something new? Ooh. <laughs> like, clearly it's a personality type, right? There are other personality types, maybe it's you, that's like, that sounds horrible. I don't wanna transform. I like staying just as I am. My life is good. I don't want change. I don't want sudden rapid transformation. Like I like steady. Whereas another person is like, I want to do something different every single day. I want variety. So how do you live with this? <laughs> I've been trying to channel this energy. So I've committed to writing a book. I already feel the urge to move on to a different project. So how do I simultaneously follow through on something while also honoring a desire for variety. Change up the book. I have to keep writing the book, but I, it, it's got me going to, sit, I sit down and I'm writing and I'm like, what could I do on this page that I didn't expect? How could I change my characters? How could I make the book radically different than what I expected? What little thing could I change that just like, oh, nobody saw that coming. Like channel that energy into the book so that I still get the satisfaction of doing something different, <laughs> but I can also follow through. That's another reason I love making music. It's so much easier to make a song than write a book, first of all. <laughs> um, okay, that's also not really fair to say that maybe because 
it took me years to learn how to make write a song and I'm in the beginning first year of writing a book so it's easier for me to write a song now after like a, eight years of writing songs uh, maybe I'd say that in eight years of writing a book I'd say it's easy but I don't know um what I was saying was that writing songs is really satisfying for this manifesting generator energy because I create a song usually I can create one or two when I'm when I'm focused on music I can create one or two songs in a month at the moment I'm releasing one song a month and each song is a brand new fresh canvas what's that fresh slate clean blank slate blank canvas fresh slate clean slate blank canvas every song you can be like I'm gonna be I'm gonna write a Latina song I'm gonna write a Scottish jig I'm gonna write an EDM pop banger like every song is a new opportunity to add variety try something new but just by virtue of writing songs I'm staying consistent so it provides it's a masculine and a feminine energy too there's structure the masculine is giving structure I've decided I'm writing songs I'm decided I've written a book but then the feminine flows in and it's the movement and the flexible and the variety of like well we're gonna write books and we're gonna write songs but we can make them different every day <laughs> so letting both of them exist at the same time because if you've committed to do something and then on top of that you're being rigid about how you have to do it that's way too much structure and masculine and if you're being completely flowy and just creating whatever comes to you and there's no commitment and there's no structure, then you're just way too much feminine. Too much masculine, you're not gonna have any fun. Too much feminine, you're not gonna get anything done or completed or finished or organized. So it's this beautiful balance of like, create a like a powerful structure, like a pipe, that's the masculine. And then the feminine energy can like flow through so for me, the structure is make a song a month, write this book. That's the structure, that's the commitment. And then the feminine energy can come in and be like, woohoo, let's be different today. <laughs> let's just kill the children out of the story that we just invented. What? I don't know, I wanted to be different. <laughs> I was getting bored. Oh. <laughs> that's such a bad topic to bring up. I really can't read your comments. Someone said, energy gave me so much happiness and something to look forward to. That's good. I think someone's saying you're liking watching my video. That's good. I'm glad. Um, I'm going to sign off now. I'll wait for a, a minute or so just so you guys can write in the comments, uh, even though I can't read it. But you guys, I think, can read it. Um, so say goodbye say what you were really um grateful for like, you know like why did you show up to the live stream what did you learn what felt good um if you're watching this in the replay you can write that in the comments below um because i know you guys read each other's comments too so you can talk to each other if you see a name that's familiar to you say hello you can ask each other questions if somebody said something and you want to know more about what they said ask them to extrapolate I'm gonna go back after this and see if I can read the comments. If they're, everything you wrote in the chat, I'm gonna go look and see if I can read it in the replay. And if I see anything juicy in there to respond to, I can reply in the comments to you guys later below. Um, I also have links in my description of the video, links below to the rest of my online world where you can come join me. Uh, you can become a studio member, join my, tight-knit online community if you want to see my music it's on all streaming platforms I'm a painter too you can see all my art in my online gallery on my website I write on my blog uh, my blog is a place where I share more of like my poetic insights into the way I'm living life and my traveling and my art projects and like my creative projects um, I'm really looking forward to the day when I'm going to be sharing my writing and my, my main novel project. At the moment, I'm not actually sharing the writing of the novel, but I am sharing the kind of the creative process around it. 
I'm so excited for when I can share that though. Um, also, I'm a songwriter, so if you want to read writing that I've published, like my poetry, I sing my poetry, you can listen to my songs. I'm going to start publishing my song lyrics on my website so you can start to look at those. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to read my song lyrics out loud, like poetry and practice reading out loud. These are kind of some of my ideas that I have percolating. Um, and all that stuff is available for you when you click in the links below. Shall we conclude with a little lava rock yoga? Cause it's so comfy, but it's so cute. Somebody said excitement when you describe things. I do get excited about describing things. If I know how to describe them well. Oh, Georgie world, the rocks are sharp. Oh my gosh, all the back. <laughs> yeah, this is like an extreme sport. Lava rock yoga. Self-flagellation. also kind of funny. It's good, you know, if you always practice yoga on a mat and everything's always perfectly flat, it's very different than training out in the wilderness where you have uneven surfaces. this wall like Humpty Dumpty. Bye, you guys. Yeah, it does look uncomfortable, doesn't it? It is uncomfortable. I recommend it as a fun challenge, but not as a way to relax. Well, no, actually, no. I think it, I'm going to start a whole lecture about it, which I shouldn't talk about it. Never mind. Pretend I didn't say anything. I'll see you later. <laughs>